Okay, um, this is just a quick video to go over the basic uh, Firefly definition setup. Um, one thing to remember is that whenever you're working with Firefly, make sure that you know that the Firefly Fermata is uploaded onto your Arduino board uh, via the Arduino IDE. Now, the easiest way to check is really just to say, well, um, what did you do last time? Did you change it? If you didn't, uh, or the Firefly from Mata is already uploaded, then it's already on there. But if you're not sure, then just make sure to overwrite whatever it was on the board with the for, uh, for Mata. So just open the ID, go to File, and if you have Firefly installed correctly, then it should show up here. For sketchbook, Firefly from Mata. And remember that you cannot have this Grasshopper uh, running at the same time uh, as the Fermata, or as the Arduino IDE. Um, they will kind of uh, interfere with, with each other. So make sure that you close out of Grasshopper. Just closing the window doesn't close Grasshopper because it's still running in the background in memory. So you will actually have to unload it, uh, Grasshopper unload plugin, and or just close out of Rhino completely. Okay, once that's done, check your um, board is an Arduino Uno for the most of you, or in most cases, uh, and check your serial port. And this should be the way that it looks. For mine, it's on COM3. And then just click Upload, and you should see it run. And if it's successful, then it would say Done Uploading right here like that okay once that's done then you can actually close this out and go back to Rhino give this a sec and restart Grasshopper okay so Firefly I have a Firefly tag, uh, tab here go to your Arduino boards everything's here uh, for most of you the first four is what you need COM ports available Open close port, Uno read, and Uno write. Okay, so double click on the canvas to bring up the search uh, box, double slash, enter to get a panel, connect that, and this shows me that this is port 3, right? Just like we saw before. Now, a lot of something I do a lot with these message boxes because these are just more for information is that I will uh, right click and untoggle the paths and untoggle the indices just to make it cleaner. And actually, you'll notice that if you zoom in enough, uh, you can actually do these things. So I can center align it. Uh, I can change the font size and all these things, okay? So you can actually kind of uh, mess around with this and I can actually pull this offset down a little bit as well. So it's not like floating up on the very edge. Now, those of you who have more than one means that your particular computer or laptop has a way of identifying devices that, you know, um, some of your peripherals might show up here. So you'll have to go back to the Arduino ID and figure out what, exactly what, COM port number um, your Arduino board is on. So you might get three, six, you know, five or nine, whatever. And then just like put it in here on the side, like let's say yours is five, then pull it out, put it on the side manually and then feed that into the port number instead of this directly. But for most of you, this should work, okay? Now sometimes, uh, you know, if your the definition hangs or you know freezes, sometimes you might have to do this. Is just to right click here, not here on the output, but here on the text. Enable to like disable it and then enable it again. Okay. So port goes there. Uh, the port number three goes down here as well, and down there as well. Okay. Open this if you hover over it. Uh, it's looking for a boolean toggle, so double click boolean toggle and move it over there. And I'll often do the same thing with these copy paste and to get my 
message, which tells me the status, and you can zoom in to adjust this if you want. You'll see a message here as well, so copy paste and copy paste. So message here. Okay. Now um, these guys also need the boolean toggle in front of the start, so copy paste twice. One goes over here and the other goes over here. All right. Now I want to look at these outputs or these um, inputs and see if there is anything happening. Right now it's null because I don't have these activated at all. So I have to open the port and when I open it, it says hooray. You know, you can begin now reading or writing data to the serial port. This turns this on, this turns that on. Uh, put one of these at the output and this uh, is a read, but you see it doesn't move or it's not actually reading um, values in real time. So to get it to read values in real time, we need a timer. Timer is set to one second. This is the polling interval or polling rate. Uh, it's set to one second at default, so we need to change this to something faster like 20. And then drag, click on the arrow and drag it and connect it to the UNO read. At this point, you'll probably get something here on the lower right of your screen. Um, I'm only recording a portion of my screen. Uh, a grasshopper timer block uh, sort of message. So now you see this value is fluctuating because now it's reading these analog uh, sort of resistance voltage values uh, in real time. Right click, you know, undo the paths and indices just so it's cleaner and you can kind of adjust this a little bit if you want. But then what I often do is to try to make it smaller and center it like that. So it's nice and clean. So there are one, two, three, four, seven, eight, a total of eight of these boxes that I want to get displays on. So I'll copy control C, control V, one, two, three, four, five, and then D pin two, four, seven, right? Okay. So that's a total of eight. It should be a total of eight. Um, I will actually, this is a little trick when you have a lot of these elements like this, pull the bottom one down, select them all, and use this uh, Mr. Sparkle Align to align them all together and distribute, just like that. Now if you're getting the slightly wrong intervals, and you can always drag this down a little, uh, holding on the shift D constrains it to orthogonal movement, and then just do the realign or distribute again to get somewhat of a nice distribution. Okay, and then now you can connect them more or less horizontally. So each of these correlates to one box and one reading. These are digital, so that's why they're zero. These guys are analog, so you'll see a lot of uh, value fluctuation in real time. Okay, now I do actually have a um, photoresistor um, like the one we did in our exercise hooked up right now. So that's why uh, you'll see this value. If I put my finger over it, the value change. If I remove my finger, the value goes back. But you also see the whole row actually moves with it. And that's just like because of the way these uh, analog circuits are somewhat interconnected. But once you have other circuits, you know, um, on there, uh, you won't see this. Uh, all the other pins will actually give you a correct reading. But when they're empty, um, this sort of electronic noise kind of happens. Okay. So now I know this is reading values, this is writing values. To check if it is really writing values, uh, like we did before, just put on a button here to D pin 13. And D pin 13, when you click on it, this display, this top one, should go to high, which means uh, the LED on your board that is connected to D pin 13 should light up when you click on the button. Right? 
Okay, that's a quick and easy way to verify things. And what I often do is I will group these, group this as the outputs, group this as the inputs, and do that to kind of arrange things because we'll often be kind of working in between values here, doing stuff to them, and then pushing them out to val uh, to output pins here, right? So it's this is a little bit easier to manage. Now the last thing I want to mention is that it's probably usually a bad idea to save your file with these all on uh, because sometimes there's stuff here uh, that will may freeze or crash the system and you'll just like have a Firefly uh, sort of definition, grasshopper definition that opens and crashes right away. Okay, so usually what you want to do before you save a definition in Firefly is you want to turn these off, turn this off, and turn this off before you save, right? And then every time when you open the file again, then you just have to toggle those, toggle those, toggle those. All right, so save it. And I think I did, yeah, we'll just call it Firefly template because you can save this file and then you don't have to go through this whole process every single time again and you can start right away. So that's what that looks like, and um, yeah, that's more or less it. Oh, uh, I forgot. Um, so just to kind of retread a little bit of stuff on connecting servos. Now, if you had things hooked up just like we had in class earlier with the servo, grounds, 5 volt and signal. This one, in this example, we connected to uh, 9. Well, I think we did 11 the other day. It doesn't really matter in this case. But let's say we're connected to 9. Then to get a servo on this, right? remember you have to hover over the D pin output and switch it from digital to servo. Okay? So make sure. And then you'll see when I switch it, uh, D pins 9 display goes from just like binary digital high low to a number display, right? And then you need a slider for the servos we're using, they're 0 to 180 degrees, so 0 smaller than 180 to get an integer slider that goes from 0 to 180, and then connect that to D pin 9. And you'll see that when I slide this, then this number changes, right? And that's telling it how many degrees to move. And you have this connected correctly, then your servo motor should move with it as well. Okay, that's it.